That was in 93! There was nothing after that! You might be wondering why, and the answer will piss you the hell off! Hi fellas, Theo's here! Nah, screw that! We all have that feeling of popping up a new game, right? It's the best part! It was great when you could just pop in a game, save it, blow on it, pop it in, yes! Not wait and have fun! It's the little things. Video games began as pretty small files. Consoles didn't require much time to load everything needed to pull this together. Those games were like, what, a few kilobytes in size? You could sneeze bigger stuff than that. <sighs> oh, it's an ant! Sure, the processing speed was incomparable to what arcades were pulling off, but for such ports to hit the home consoles without losing that much in the process and still not needing to take the time to charge, I can really appreciate no. So apparently some games were too good to be seen with unloading textures or whatever, but it's still not a complete game. Yeah, the SNES version of Mickey Mania is missing a level, state sections, and part of the ending, but god forbid it looks ugly and easy. Little side note, this game is unnecessarily difficult, and I hate its trial and error design. The producers went on to make the Toy Story game, and now these reviews make a whole lot of sense. Another notorious loading heavy game was Street Fighter Alpha 2, which, let's be fair, looks damn near the same as the arcade version. The speed during gameplay is pretty much spot on, and that's it. The loading, man, it just got out of hand! It's gotta load the transitions, the stages, the music, the victory screen. Man, if you wanna play, you have to be patient. In a fighting game. At that point, might as well play a board game. Dude. Sim City on SNES. Gotta admit, never played it, but I only hear great things about it. You can build and transform the city however you like, add all the buildings and businesses that you want. It's a really fun time. You can even have disasters going on if they step out of line. Hmm, they found my address. And of course, you can save your progress. Sh Jeez, I mean, thank you for the memories, but I got stuff to do, man. Come on, man, the bank's waiting! But overall, it's fantastic. This isn't. This doesn't have loading screens. It's got hold up screens. Just another on the list of f yous for buying this game. No, I didn't, I swear! Thankfully, these were mostly the exception and not the rule during this console generation, but moving on to the CD era, ugh, things got rough. Roles got reversed here. Loading became the rule. On the PlayStation. Nintendo actually had a good thing going on with the N64 by having pretty much no load times, despite the games being so complex and hard to program for. Point for Nintendo! It's hard to argue against all the loading for the CD consoles. This disc could hold up to 700 megabytes of information, and having so many polygons on screen can do a number on the station. And it will sure let you know. Yes, the classic PlayStation loading theme song. It's basically the sensor moving from side to side, and as rough as it sounds, it's almost cathartic to me. Call it nostalgia or just glad that the freaking thing is working, but having a sound for loading didn't stop there. If anything, consoles have been trying to hide as much as possible when it comes to that. The PS2 did a pretty good job, I barely hear the thing. Hey guys, we need to fix this thing, my wife caught me playing last night. Mm-hmm, Tomb Raider. Listen man, I need some privacy. Oh, I bet. For the next generations, it was all about the ventilation. If you didn't feel your console breathing... Uh, it's urgent! We need a doctor! Yeah. Yeah, I can wait. It's funny, if you modded your 360, you could actually graduate how much ventilation was going on while playing. So, you either silently watch your console die or welcome to the Manhattan Project. The other consoles up to the 8th generation tried as much as possible to hide the sound, but it was only after the introduction of the SSDs with the PS5 and the Xbox Series X that ventilation was almost gone. Almost. But man, when the game was too big for the console like it was clearly meant for the next generation, you can just feel the console sweating like holy sh**. That's when you have to worry that your system- Oh my god. <laughs> it's not gonna make it. Loading is just a necessary evil. Of course we need it constantly, games are getting bigger by the day basically. It wasn't about kilobytes anymore, every stage could be worth gigabytes at a time. But companies learned to be sneaky about it. One of the best examples came with the GTA series. You get an initial loading screen when you start up the game, and that's pretty much it. Everything else is loading in the background, and it only stops when something really big is happening. Another great example is the God of War games. It feels seamless moving from one area to the next, generally being stopped by a group of enemies and then continuing forward. Aha! Uh -huh, that's what they get you! That time fighting can be used to load the next big area. Only rarely do you see the logo on the corner for what's coming up, but with each sequel up to the PS3 games, it became less and less often. They even have these sections where creator has to slowly move through a crevice, ledges, or a somewhat long climbing part so the player doesn't feel that their time is being wasted. So, if you have an open Friday, you can beat the game twice. 
Another game that really manages those transitions graciously was Gradius 5. You finish a stage and then immediately move on to the next. No waiting, no bullshit starts in the middle, just go! It's actually something that the series has been doing for a while. My biggest memory, of course, is with Gradius 3 on the SNES. Same thing, end the stage, go to the next and get murdered. Also quite necessary if your game is up to kill you constantly. Oh, did I say kill? Oh, I'm sorry, I meant that. That's right! Super Meat Boy Probably the best example of a game with almost no loading. Not because it's simple, but because it would be frustrating otherwise. Hold up! This game is a crazy mother. You begin with easy stages, just teaching the ropes, how to move around, have fun. After the tutorial, the game is just done with your sh**. It'll make you regret even having the goal of having fun. You pay the first time when you buy it, and then every time after that. It's just a microtransaction, but with your feelings. At least it doesn't affect your patience. The game is sliding fast. They knew it would take ages to beat one stage, so they put half the effort into making it not load. It's instantaneous. They knew that if it would take a second longer, people would just hate the game. However, because of that, that's where fast loading gets you. Then there's the slow killing class. Sonic 06. One of the most infamous games ever created. Almost two decades is still being talked about. The game had so many problems, still taking people all this time trying to justify, hell, even trying to fix it. After all, when it takes like a minute to load a conversation, it's a moment. The game is half loading and half hernia. Talking about the game's problems will be beating up a dead horse, so I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna shoot it. The team responsible for Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg How the mighty have fallen Decided to work on a realistic take on Sonic for the upcoming generation Mistake number one With realistic physics and a more serious tone And in March 2006, Juji Naka, basically the father of Sonic Left the company to work on other projects outside of Sonic Sega should do the same and because the Wii couldn't handle the HD graphics, the team was split, half for Sonic 06 for the 360 and the PS3, and the other for Sonic and the Secret Wins for the Wii. Then Sega pressured them to finish Sonic 06, so they had to ignore the pleas from the testing and quality departments and just release it as it was. Listen, I don't want to blast the development team like everyone does, I understand them. It's rough working on big projects like this and losing a strong part that makes up the heart and soul of the company, and even having your workforce chopped in half. That's disastrous, believe me, I've been there. But I just hate myself, so here we go! This should not have been released, the thing wasn't finished, and it clearly took Sega a long while to learn that lesson. Hell, they still are! Just rushing projects to meet the holiday. Kids can wait a few months for a goddamn Sonic game, they've been waiting for Spongebob to be good again, they can wait a little longer. And yes, Sonic 06 being unfinished also applies to how long it takes to play. It's not optimized for any console. Ironically, the Wii games play better than this slog. So, that's what I'm gonna say about that. We should move on to different environments than a city, um... Oh, kinda like them. Some companies are very cheeky when it comes to loading their games, but others are just stand-up comedians. Some games know that they'll take a while to go from one area to another, so why not have the player have a good time in the meantime? Spider-Man PS4 has these cutscenes where Spidey takes the subway train to go to different parts of the city. Funnily, it would take longer that way in canon, but you gotta pay off if you wanna go yourself. And this little thing has a lot of details in itself, because there's a part in the game where Spider-Man is being haunted, so he has to stay outside of the train, that's so cool! Or you could keep the game going with light blows, that works. The God of War reboot sequel does it for both games, where you can still walk around, have conversations, or even have a fight while the next area is loading. That's how they managed to go from one world to another and you to concentrate the fight and to even notice. Smart, right? By giving you a small minigame while the next action set piece is coming in the background, you get a story that works like one take from beginning to end. Or screw it, just have a whole ass game in there! Yeah, other examples give you actual minigames to spend the time while it's loading, just so you don't get distracted and do less important things, like work. A big example is the FIFA series that let you practice game mechanics while the match is loading. Or the Bayonetta games where you can practice your combos, or hell, even the DBC games like Budokai 3 and Tenkaichi 3 where you can smash the buttons to have a bunch of things happen on screen. Maybe fill the area with a little green man. Uh, Patrick Day. And that's cool and all, but do you recognize the pattern? They are all small versions of the main game or stuff that's not even a game, just a quick time event that's kinda related to the game itself. You might be wondering why, and the answer will piss you the hell off. In 1995, Namco filed a patent for using minigames in loading screens. And you think that all the Namco games would include minigames on the screen, right? Just ask your teacher. Why, well, yes, you are an idiot. Next question. Barely 
any Namco games have mini games in them. The biggest example is Rich Racer with Galaxian, one of the biggest arcade games for sure, but that was in 93! There was nothing after that! You think that after all the buzz that they made with the band, we'll be talking about funny mini games from Namco, the creator of classic arcade games making basically two games for maximum enjoyment, but no! And sure, the pattern had ended by 2015, but by then, companies had moved on. They found different ways to make loading screens more interesting. Like I said before, by adding images with facts, little funny cutscenes, maybe gameplay sections. And by now, games load so quickly, there's no need for all this stuff anymore. I love their games, but Nanko really hurt the industry by hoarding accounts that they didn't even exploit. But overall, gaming managed to survive without it. That shows the length that designers would go through to innovate. Oh. It did take a while though. My lord, the PS1 was the most notorious example of spending half the game waiting for you to get out of the damn bathroom. Most games were not ready to be read from a disc. Even the cartridge versions played better. Just look at the Final Fantasy games. You already know where I'm going with this. The goddamn random battles. On the SNES, even on the GBA, it's just and there you go, kill the squirrels. But on the PS1? And I have to grind on this? The 3D games finally felt a little faster, probably because we didn't have a point of comparison, but it just got worse! Should I just go to the arcade? Fighting games you gotta do worse during that generation. Yes, the games where you needed to stay hyped to enjoy the thrill of the fight, go get a drink. And don't even get me started on the PC ports. Oh yeah, the PC. Yeah, this whole situation with the loading screen has definitely been concerning the console players for the most part, but for gaming PCs? Well, depends on your specs, really. If you spend half your year's income in your gaming setup, yeah, you won't notice a thing. You'll notice the heat, though. But if your system is average, ugh. It might even take longer than the actual consoles. That's the deal with the optimization. When a game is coming up and they announce that the minimal requirements are basically PS5 Pro levels, yeah, it will most likely be rough. And sometimes even the loading doesn't load everything. Missing texture, just nightmare fueled characters, and the floor is an option. So that's where you find that even if you have a majestic beast of a machine, your experience might be terrible either way. That's why now games are basically installed on the consoles themselves. When you're about to try a new game, you better have something else to do in the meantime. 50 gigabytes? That's cute. Consoles are basically PCs now. In order for them to load the game properly, they must install a bunch of gigabytes and probably a day one update. Sorry, definitely a day one update. But also make sure that you have to wait after the first go. Just have fun with the game after that, no waiting. But I still miss the classic way. Video games have become way more expensive to produce with every generation. They use pretty much better technology than the ones used for movies, but I still love the simple pixel art style. They aren't cheap for any stretch of the imagination, but still show a lot of love and dedication. I do not like them, Sam I am. And by needing less processing to show everything, loading just doesn't exist for these old school style games. That's the risk with AAA games. They must not only push the limits of what consoles and PCs can handle, but also make sure that the gameplay is seamless with no loading or making it invisible as possible. And I'm sure there's an entire department dedicated to that. That way, video games will continue to get more and more expensive. I'm worried that one day, all the effort that the companies put into their games won't be able to give the returns they expect. Not just Square Enix, while the small AA or even the indie companies will be in a much better position. It's hard for loading screens or even loading sections to completely go away. They are annoying, no doubt, but if we wanted to have great gaming experiences, it's something that we had to deal with for a while. Even with cartridges being used on the Switch, it's something that we cannot avoid, being before or during gameplay. Loading for a game is like sleeping for us, we need a moment to breathe, it doesn't have to be action the whole time. I have to admit, one of my favorite moments recently was with God of War Ragnarok. Not during the boss fights, but the interactions between Kratos and Atreus. Them sitting, talking, and growing together. Maybe the game was taking a chance to load the next area, I don't know, but damn it, I got emotional! So, I learned to be patient with my games, they're trying their best to give me a good time, enjoy a moment of relaxation while I explore the world and watch the scenery, and alright, screw this. 